The concept of method can have a twofold meaning. On the one hand, it can be seen as the principles and criteria guiding and informing the group and its activities. On the other hand, it can be regarded as the structural and organizational procedures given shape to the activity itself. The method refers to the operational rules or the working rules of professional interaction with the members of a team. The method has to build up and organize the team. It requires the respect of procedures as well as of determined behaviors and attitudes and structuring definite actions. The method or system of norms ruling the working team has to be defined as a set of recurring characteristics. For example, the attitudes of individuals involved a certain behavior related to the workplace, relationships, as well as shared expectations on the results. A working team is based on a variety of regulations, which are the result of interaction between the members in order to arrange uniformity among each of them and avoid any conflict. One, analysis of resources and obligations or limits. Resources are understood as everything the team has at its disposal to carry out its work. First of all, resources are the team members with their personal qualities and professional skills, then also the organization and all its economic means and facilities. Time is also considered an important resource. It's fundamental that the group shall give value to the capabilities possessed in view of mutual integration. Obligations are instead seen as anything that limits and influences the team. Obligations, or limits, could be seen as negative, but they are actually tangible commitments corresponding to a certain reality, and therefore can also express positive duties. Within the analysis of resources and obligations, it's important to underline that these characteristics have really thin boundaries, and so can be at times interchanged. What was a resource at a given time could be now an obligation or vice versa. Each individual could in fact be a resource for the whole team and then become an obligation when he or she adopts actions which can load the team or go against the team's flow. In the end, the analysis of resources and obligations or limits is the only way through which the team reviews what resources in terms of knowledge and instruments it has as well as which limits and obstacles it has to face. 2. Discussion Discussing is the rule. It's on a pragmatic level, as discussions need method in order to get the participation and contributions of all members, so that information, opinions, knowledge and doubts can be expressed and shared among everybody. Generally speaking, it's important to define times and methods to freely express personal opinions or feelings, as well as concrete data. Rules for discussion vary according to the following three methods. Roundtables, turn-taking, and free discussion. Roundtables are definitely useful to collect everyone's ideas and opinions, even of those who feel uncomfortable in expressing their thoughts. It is therefore convenient as it raises the level of commitment of all participating members or avoiding any conflict or contrasts between peers. Anyway, it's important to underline that roundtables can lead to a selective listening of some contents, especially when many participants take place in it, and shall be therefore used only in specific situations. Turn-taking grants much more flexibility as participants talk one at a time and take turns speaking. It involves processes for constructing contributions, answering to previous comments, and transitioning between speakers. Furthermore, it allows to regulate interventions based on different opinions within team members. Free discussion may be a good method of discussion if a well-defined path has been given through which techniques like brainstorming, that is the production of innovative, spontaneous and creative ideas, can be applied to the discussion itself.